Ah, Kamala's America. Who knew the boog would be so fun? And so many RVs lying around. All right, let's see. Food, check. Water, check. Guns and armor, check, check. But it feels like I'm just missing something. Batteries. Making them can't be that hard, right? I mean, pretty sure I just gotta put them together? If there's one thing I recommend, do not try to make your own batteries. Today in Armored Republic's video, we're gonna talk about off-grid power solutions. Let's get into the video. What's up guys, Steven Cortez here from Armored Republic. We are the world's number one direct-to-consumer armor manufacturer in the world. And today we're gonna to talk about emergency power supplies. Last time we talked about food, water, guns, ammo, gear, all that stuff. But one of the most overlooked things is power. It's the one utility we take for granted besides running water. And it's the one thing that if that stops running, there is no emergency services. There is no food getting stocked on grocery shelves, no trash pickup or anything like that. And so with that, I'm gonna hand it off to David Schaefer, our COO. He is an expert in this field, so take it away, David. We brought a couple of devices out here for you guys to look at today. These are all things that have been in use for some time. Uh, so we have some experience behind them and we can, we can talk about it. Um, basically everything that's out here has been used living totally off the grid um, for a significant period of time. Um, so we'll kind of tell you the pros and cons and how to think about how to think about power in your preparedness plants. We are addicted to electronics. Power is actually yeah, like we we probably worry about it a lot. Like, what am I going to do if the power goes out? For ninety nine percent of human history, there has not been electricity. You'll survive. We just have to be thoughtful, uh, and we also have to realize there are some things that are such good force multipliers. Um, that it's worth keeping a way to generate power. So think of your um, PVS-14s, your, your night vision. Um, think of communications devices. Those things are absolutely worth investing power in. Something to keep the TV running, not so important. So we're gonna jump right into some particular tools that, um, that I would recommend and, and that are probably pretty familiar to most of you. Uh, and, and we'll kind of go through the pros and cons of those. First and foremost is a generator. That's probably the first thing most people think of when they think of emergency power supplies. The pros of generators, they make a lot of power relatively rapidly and relatively easily. They're gonna need fuel. Fuel has an expiration date. So if you're thinking like long-term planning, five, 10 years, that becomes a problem. Um, I recommend, if you can, though, try to get a dual fuel generator. A dual fuel generator will take gasoline or propane or something else. Propane, as far as we know, doesn't really have an expiration date. Gas, especially if it's untreated a year, two years, who knows what's going to happen. Diesel's a little better than gas, but propane lasts forever. A con of a generator is it's going to be really loud. So unless, unless you have a strong security element, um, that's gonna call a lot of attention to you um, when you fire, fire that thing up, even, even a smaller generator like this. Hondas and Yamahas, those tend to have the best, um, best reliability, uh, re reputation for reliability. Generac, those are, those are good as well. There's a few others out there. Try to get something from a major manufacturer and try to get dual fuel. So next, a super common thing you'll think of in the, in the preparedness world is solar panels. This is just a standard 100 watt solar panel. Those are the most common ones you'll find. You can get them everywhere from Costco to Home Depot to Amazon. Um, takes a little bit of know-how to, to get them working in the, in the first place, a couple different parts. You'll need a charge controller, a battery, and an inverter to get the most use out of them. And, and we can talk about those pieces um, soon. The great thing about solar panels, they are super quiet and they last a long time. Solar panels, as a rule of thumb, will put out 80% of their rated power after 30 years. So this 100 watt solar panel in 20 something years uh, will still be putting out about 80 watts, which is, which is a good amount of power, especially if you have multiples. Um, the cons to solar panels, unless you have a bunch of them, uh, they won't charge uh, batteries of a significant size very quickly. So, there, there's an investment there if you want to try to charge um, big batteries and power big things. And we'll talk about what things we should be thinking about powering in a little bit. All right, so this is a, a, a smaller Goal Zero 
battery. Um, this particular one, when I first started living off grid, powered, um, I, would, I would charge it up with a solar panel and it would power my internet and like recharge cell phones and, and laptop. And I, I use this for quite a while. It was a great, great tool. Um, it's able to put out like your 12 volt, like your cigarette lighter in your car has USB ports and then it has one uh, 120 volt port. So that's like you know, plugging in your laptop or, or um, um, anything that uses like a normal house plug. Um, these are great tools and I love the Goal Zero um, units because they do, it, like everything's taken care of for you. Um, similar to like your Apple products, right? They just thought of everything and it's done. You don't have to think about it. Jackery also makes some really um, good products. Uh, when I got this, Jackery, was not not bigger around, but they've they've come on the scene lately. So this is a lithium lithium battery. It can be used by itself or or connected up with other batteries. And I like lithium batteries because they charge up relatively quickly, uh, even even from solar panels. Um, their self discharge rate isn't bad, so they won't like if if you're sitting there, they won't like lose their charge horribly. They're less sensitive to like the age of batteries, and you don't have to service them. You don't have to change out chemicals or anything like that. So, I like lithiums. The one thing with lithiums, though, is if you're not getting high quality ones, um, they actually have circuits in here that like level out the charge across the cells and all kinds of stuff. Um, if that circuitry goes bad, even though everything else in the battery is fine, the battery won't work um, properly. So it's slightly less rugged than, than the, um, like the older like forklift style batteries and stuff like that. But in, in my assessment, the benefits outweighed the, the cons. This is a small personal sized uh, Goal Zero again, um, solar panel that I like to keep with me. Um, so this, would, this is good for charging small electronics. It puts out, um, your normal like uh, USB port, so five volt, puts out 12 volt power, which will charge up um, a, a Goal Zero or, or really any, any type of 12 volt battery. And you can link these, these units together. Um, so this is useful as we're getting into more small electronics, having a solar panel to charge stuff up. The, the thing with solar panels is they're slow, um, but if you can set them somewhere where they can charge a battery for some time, that's kind of the best use of them. So you use solar panels to charge batteries, and then you charge your device off of the batteries once the batteries are, you know, topped up. Um, so speaking of batteries, some of the most important things that you can keep electro or like most important electronics that you can keep going are going to be things like night vision, um, lighting and communications. Those are, as far as I can tell, the three most important things. Night vision, communications, lighting. So most night vision is gonna use either AA or CR123 batteries. Um, we all know the good old lithium energizer batteries. Those are great. Um, I would recommend finding some uh, lithium rechargeable AA's and CR123's. That's gonna be your best bet for being able to recharge stuff um, over time. Remember, if, if there's like truly a massive collapse in the United States, the batteries are gonna be used up like that. So three, five years into something like that, there's not gonna be too many batteries just laying around. So rechargeables are your best bet and then just conserving stuff for when you actually need it. But we all know batteries go bad. Your alkaline batteries, they leak out if you don't use them. Um, so beware, most electronic things are gonna have a lifespan because you're not gonna either have the fuel to run a generator, you're not gonna have the small batteries to power them, um, parts are gonna wear out, etc. cetera. Um, and that's really where the advantage of solar comes in. Another thing to think about is scattered about the US in some type of bad situation, even after all the fuel has been used up, are millions and millions and millions of cars with batteries in them. Uh, and generally speaking, they're 12 volt batteries. Um, your starting battery for your car. So that's a, that's a great way um, to store some energy if you have even a little solar panel like this can over time slowly charge up a, um, a starting battery for a car. You can charge your cell phone a bunch of times off of that. You could charge some small rechargeables a bunch of times off of that. Um, so they're 
those options are out there. So guys, all of this is to be prepared, not scared. <clears throat> um, all of these little bits of information you can file away are gonna make you a better protector and provider if and when something goes wrong in the United States. So we like to think about the, the biggest, most apocalyptic event where everything shuts down tomorrow and doesn't ever come back on. Realistically, there's some, there's some things to think about. Local power outage, or so you want to talk about a power outage? When your car battery goes dead. So having some way to recharge it or jumpstart your car without having to rely on somebody else, great tool to have. And if something bad goes in the US, guess what? That jumpstarting battery is going to be able to charge your electronics and, and be of good use to you uh, for some time. So don't focus on, like, I got to run my AC constantly. That's gonna get really expensive, um, and for most people, isn't gonna be a good use of time. We're in the desert, one of the hottest, in the Arizona desert, one of the hottest places in the world. People have lived here for hundreds, thousands of years without AC. AC is a new invention. Um, water, far more important. And guess what? A towel soaked with water is gonna keep you plenty cool. Might hide you from thermal, too. Um, other things to <clears throat> consider are, um, what are your real force multipliers? Having AC may or may not be a force multiplier. Being able to see in the dark, be that with night vision or flashlights or something like that, that's different. Being able to communicate long distances, different. Most ham radio devices are um, powered off of 12 volt, which is like what you're gonna find in your car or um, many, many lithium batteries are, are 12 volt. Um, so, I'm not talking about your, your bow fangs, but the, the larger like base and mobile style units are going to be able to run off of car batteries and stuff like that. So having a solar panel that can charge a car battery um, and a ham radio, that's, that's a real force multiplier to be investing in. Another, another force multiplier for us out here in the Southwest is the ability to um, pump water. Um, so again, you could, you could find water um, out in the desert, it's there but the advantage you gain by being able to pump water is, is huge. So that's, that's an area where having solar panels, some batteries, or a generator um, to pump large volumes of water quickly out of the ground is, is huge. So if, if I were looking at um, a property that, that you might have and you're thinking like, well, I can't, I can't afford to make this whole thing off-grid tomorrow, the first thing I would do would be make sure you have backups for your uh, water supply. And you can get uh, mechanical pumps or windmills, stuff like that. Those are good. Um, but in the short term, being able to pump it with uh, an electric pump is, is huge. All right, guys. So that's, that's our real quick intro into backup, um, backup power systems. There's a ton of content on YouTube. That's where I learned it all. Um, and so I'm hoping this video um, helps you to be prepared rather than scared and know what to start looking into. You don't have to go like massive, I need, I need this massive power plant to power my whole house. Get some simple backups for simple things first, and then you can start building up on that. But remember, we're really addicted to electronics today. You don't need as much power as you think you do. Um, just make sure you're putting it in the right place. Mm -hmm.